In this construction, I'm going to show you how to use the slider tool to dynamically create polygons of different number of sides that are both regular and inscribed within a circle. And then we're going to use this construction to find an approximation for the value of pi. So we begin by clicking on the slider tool, inserting it into our worksheet. I will label it n for number of sides. I have to start at 3 as the minimum number of sides for a polygon. I will have it go up to 100 and count by 1s. When I hit apply, this slider tool is now inserted into my worksheet. It is good practice to immediately click on your arrow tool so that we don't start constructing uh, objects we don't want in our worksheet. I'm just going to test that the slider tool counts by 1s and now I'm going to construct a circle. We have different options for the types of constructions we want to do. I will use the circle with center through a point. My first click will be the location of the circle center. My second click will be a point on the circle. And what I'm going to do here is rotate this point on the circle around its center to the appropriate location based on the number of sides in the polygon. So effectively I'm using the central angle of a regular polygon. I will take 360 degrees, divide it by the number of sides, and that will determine the location of the next point in the regular polygon. So I come up to my toolbar, I see reflection here, that's not the transformation I want, so I'll look at what other transformations are here. Rotate around a point, perfect. Select the point you want to rotate, then select the center point that you want to rotate about. By default, GeoGebra, GeoGebra puts 45 degrees in there. I'm going to change that to 360 divided by n, counterclockwise, click OK, and back to my arrow tool. That looks like a 120 degree arc, so I'm ready to continue. Next, we would like to use these two points to construct a regular polygon. So I'm going to come up to the Polygon tool, hit the down arrow, and select Regular Polygon. I'm going to click on these two points in a counterclockwise pattern. First point, second point, the uh, regular polygon bar comes up asking for the number of vertices. I'm going to change that to say N because I want my toolbar to control the number of vertices. We click OK and we have an inscribed regular triangle in the circle. We can drag our toolbar and see that the vertices are all generated on the circle. We have our regular polygons and now we're going to use this regular polygon to give us an estimation for pi. Since pi is defined as the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter, we can take the ratio of a regular polygon's perimeter to the circle's diameter. And as that regular polygon becomes a better fit for the circle, so will our approximation for pi. So I'm going to start by choosing the segment tool so that I can get a radius in here. I want the radius so I have something to measure and so that I can calculate my diameter. If we come up to this angle tool, this is our measuring button. The down arrow lets me choose what I want to measure. Uh, we can measure angles, area, slope, but we want distance. I'm going to click on the radius and it gives me the length. I'm going to click on the polygon and it tells me its perimeter. So I need to type in an expression. My input bar is missing at the bottom. So I'm going to go up to the view and say put my input bar back. I want to type in the perimeter of the polygon divided by two times the radius. Now the perimeter of the polygon we see that it's variable is a long name, perimeter poly 1. So I will type that and say divide it by 2 times, well what variable has the value 5? That's F3. Anytime there is a subscript we use an underscore 
uh, when we're typing it into the input bar. So I'm going to type perimeter poly 1, divided by parentheses 2 times f underscore 3. And when I hit enter, I see that a new variable showed up in the algebra pane. It is a lowercase o. It has an approximate value of 2.83. I expect this to get very close to pi as I drag this toolbar. And I see I have 3.14. Well, GeoGebra is only rounding to two places. I want more places. So I will go up to the option button, hover over the rounding option, and select 15 decimal places. Now everything in my worksheet is to 15 decimal places. I don't want to look at this anymore, so I'm going to say, well, let me, oh, that is not what I wanted. There we go. So I got rid of the uh, perimeter text box and I brought back my polygon by clicking that radio button next to it. And now I'm going to use a text box to reveal the approximation for pi on the screen. I'm going to say pi. And I'm going to use the symbol down here. See the times divide minus. Well, in this I have approximately. So pi is approximately equal to. And now I have to select the object from my worksheet. We said it was the lowercase o that was giving us the approximation for pi. Here's the lowercase o. And click OK. So I have this text box now, which is my uh, just statement of what the approximation of pi is. If I go to the graphics button, when I click on this, I can change the size of this font. And now I don't need my algebra pane anymore. This would be the type of worksheet that I would load up to my work website so that students can explore the value of pi. We see that at 100 sides, we have 3.14107. We would like to see at least 3.1415. So let's go to our object properties. Let's change the top value from 100 to say 250. And does that give me 3.1415? Yes. And to get even more accurate uh, value for pi, we'd have to go to more sides. And eventually we would freeze our computer because it would run out of RAM. I think the most I've gone up to was 1,000 or 2,000. When I tried 10,000, my computer froze and I had to shut it down. This leads to other discussions with students. Uh, we found the approximation for pi from the interior side of the circle, so it gave us an underestimate. And then you can use tangents and circumscribed polygons to get an overestimate and take the average of the two.